So in this series, we're going to cover how to set up load balancing with Nginx. Now what we're looking at here are four servers that I have created inside of Amazon. I'm not using any AWS specific features, however, so we're just going to see how to generically use a load balancer and set up some security stuff. The stuff I'm going to cover here is going to be relevant to any hosting provider, whether that's Linode or DigitalOcean or AWS or whatever. So what we see here is I have four servers. One is the load balancer itself. We're going to have two that'll be application servers and a fourth that will be for persistence. In other words, our database, and in my case, what I'm going to show here, a cache server as well, Redis. So what I want to do in this first video is just set up these three servers, the app servers and the load balancer server, because they have a lot of shared stuff installed. And then we'll move into configuring them so that we are load balancing between our two application servers. So we can first get started with our load balancer here. I'm going to copy the public IP address, and we're going to log in over here in terminal and install some stuff. So you'll see each of these servers is an Ubuntu 16.04 server. It's just the latest LTS from Ubuntu, which I use a lot. The first thing I'm going to do here is just install some basics. So I'll do sudo apt-get update so it knows about available packages, and then we'll install some basics. All right, that's done. And the basics in this case are just git, tmux, vim, curl, wget, zip, unzip, and htop. These are just some packages that I install on most servers. All right, so the basics are installed. What we're going to do here is get nginx on the server. And this server is the load balancer. So once we install nginx, that's basically it. So we'll do sudo add apt repository. And we're going to get the repository nginx development. Now, I like to get the development branch of nginx here. It's actually the mainline branch, which is nginx plus bug fixes. It's not technically the stable release. It is ahead of their stable repository of nginx that you can get but they count it as production ready because it typically is just the stable branch plus bug fixes. So I like to get the development one. Oop, and I'm sorry, I forgot to prefix it PPA. So we're going to add app repository from Ubuntu's PPA repository. We're going to grab the one named Nginx development and I'll hit enter to actually add the information for that. Okay, that's added. So I can do sudo app get update. And once that's done, we can install Nginx. Great, and let's see, we'll get that public IP address, open a tab here, and we should see Nginx's default page, and we do. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to repeat these steps on the two application servers to get Nginx and the basics on there, and then we'll move on to install PHP and get an application set up on each of these servers as well. All right, so my two application servers have the basics installed and they have Nginx installed. I'm going to log into my application server here, and we're going to go through installing and setting up PHP and a Laravel application. Okay, so let's just make sure I'm not wrong. We'll see that Nginx is installed and running, and it is, that's great. Next, we'll get PHP. So just like with Nginx, I'm going to add a repository, and PPA Andre PHP is going to let us get the latest version of PHP, which is 7.1 as of this video. That's added, so we'll do sudo apt-get update, and that's done, so we can do this long command and get a bunch of PHP stuff installed. So we'll install FPM, and we'll install CLI, and then we'll install a bunch of modules that you typically will install for a PHP application. And just as a side note, I am setting these servers up fairly quickly. I am assuming you have some server knowledge before we move on to learning how to load balance. So things like running these commands to install Nginx and PHP are things I'm assuming you know, and I also have videos on them elsewhere, so you can look those up to get a little bit more of a detailed explanation of what we're doing. Okay, so Nginx is installed, PHP is installed. Let's run this one line command to get composer, which is going to get the composer script. It's going to pipe it to PHP using sudo because it sets the installation directory to user bin, which is a root own directory, so it needs permission to write there. We're going to say create the file and name it composer instead of composer.far. All right, so I can say which composer, and that finds it, and I can run composer commands here. Great. So now we can set up an application since we have PHP installed. So I'm going to head to var www. We have the HTML directory in here. I'm going to install a new Laravel application here. I don't have a Laravel application to use for all of our videos here. We're just going to create a new Laravel application individually because the details of what's in the application don't really matter to see how to load balance with Nginx in this case. So in var www, I'm going to do sudo create project with composer. We're going to create a new Laravel Laravel project. I'm going to grab dev develop because 5.5 isn't stable yet, and I want to get Laravel 5.5 in this case. And I'm just going to tell it to create it inside of a directory named my app. Now, in a scenario for you, you might want to 
get git access to your GitHub repository from your server. So your server can do a git pull or a git clone, and then it'll get your real application. But in this case, I'm just creating a new Laravel app on each of our application servers because I don't need any specific logic here. And I do want to remove existing VCS. And that's all set. Great. So the next thing I'll do is own, change the owner of all the directories and files in the my app directory to www.data, user, and group. The group is getting changed too because I have this colon here. And that is going to set it, as I said, to user and group www.data. PHP is running as user and group www.data, so it won't have any issues writing to directories in my app, specifically the storage directory and the bootstrap directory, which are two locations that Laravel 5 needs to write to. So storage has some caches and bootstrap has some framework specific caches that it needs to write to. Okay, so we have PHP installed. We have a Laravel application here that should be all set to run. I have permissions in here that'll let it run without getting the wait screen of death. I need to next configure Nginx. So we'll do sudo vim etsy nginx sites available and default. We're just gonna reuse the default configuration. I'm gonna blank all this out. And we'll put in a basic configuration here. So it's listening on port 80 on the IPv4 and IPv6 networks. This is the default server. This is the only server configured in Nginx, so I just have server name as the default underscore here. I don't really need to give it a host name here because it's only going to receive requests for one application in my case. The root is where we just created my application, var dub dub my app, and of course the public directory within the Laravel application because that's where it should serve public files to. The web root should be directed to that directory. I'm saying check for the following index files, one of which is indexed PHP. So if I don't define any index file in the URI in a browser when going to the website, it's just going to try to find index PHP. Server name I just set as the default location. It's going to try files. So whatever I set in the URI and the URL that I use in my browser, try to find it as a file. If I can't find it as a file, try to find it as a directory. If it's not a file or directory within the web root, then just send the request to index.php passing any query string if there is one. Now, if it is a file ending in .php, it gets sent down to this location block where we include our fast CGI stuff so we can send it to PHP FPM, which is a implementation of fast CGI. And then we fast CGI pass it off to PHP FPM, which is listening at this location, var run PHP, PHP 7.1 FPM.sock. Now by default, Nginx might give you 7.0 because that's the default installed with Ubuntu right now. But since we got PHP from that repository, we installed PHP 7.1. The socket file where PHP FPM is listening is therefore named differently for the specific PHP version we have. Okay, we'll save and quit that. Sudo, I'm gonna do, well, we could do sudo service Nginx config test, and this says it's done and we don't get any errors, so it's okay. I like doing sudo nginx-t, which does the same thing, but it says specific error messages if there are any. This says the syntax is okay, so we're good. Do sudo service nginx reload to suck in that new configuration. So let's see, we are on server uh, ends in 200, the IP address, the private IP address. Let's head over here. I think that, yep, that's this server. So that's the public IP. Let's do that in a browser. We should get the Laravel application and we do. So our Laravel app is up and running here. Okay, great. So I've already replicated the installation of the Laravel application on both app servers. And of course we saw me install Nginx on the load balancer server, but we didn't configure it yet. So the next video is gonna be us configuring the load balancer.